Okay, I am going to be reviewing the book The Tutor of History written by Manjushri Thapa. Uh, now I'll speak a little about the author. Manjushri Thapa is a Canadian essayist, fiction writer, translator and editor of Nepali descent. She was born in Kathmandu in 1968 and grew up in Nepal, Canada and the United States. She began to write upon completing her BFA in photography at Rhode Island School of Design. Her first book was Mustang Poet in Fragments. In 2001, she published this novel, The Tutor of History, which she had begun as her MFA thesis in the Creative Writing Program in the U University of Washington in Seattle. Her genres of writing include novels, short stories, and She has also written as an op-ed contributor to the New, New York Times. Her best-known book is Forget Kathmandu, and it was published just weeks before the uh, Royal Coup in Nepal on 1st February 2005. She writes regularly in the print media and has also been published in the New York Times. The setting of this story is set in contemporary Nepal in a time when the country is caught between tradition and modernity. The events of the novel unfold against the backdrop of a campaign for parliamentary elections in the bustling roadside town of Khairini town. Khairini town suddenly sees a cacophony of political activities and snarl its simplicity. The major parties context, uh, contesting the elections are Congress, the UMN, which is a Communist Party, and the People's Party. At its heart, the book is about four main characters. Giridhar Adhikari is the chairman of the People's Party District Committee and he suffers from a serious alcohol addiction and strange violent manias. Rishi Parorji is a lonely, unemployed bachelor and disillusioned communist who gives private tuitions in history to disinterested middle-class boys. Om Gurung is a former British Gurkha determined to bring love into every life in his hometown. Finally, we have Benita Dahal, who is a reclusive young widow who runs a small tea shop and is careful not to demand of life more than the meager pleasures it brings her. The characters are all shown, uh, portrayed to have been struggling with a certain uh, issue in their life and the, a lot of the novel focuses on how they overcome these issues in their life. The themes of the novel are the reaction of the common people to the political parties and the distrust of political leaders. Uh, it shows that how at the village level party politics have more to do with personal loyalties generation-long deaths, family patronage, and ethnic and caste rivalries. Another major theme is the rigging of elections. The, it's shown in the novel that villagers themselves participate in the rigging, and this happens when the entire village or the majority of its population together decides to support a particular party, and on the day of the elections, the uh, village allows the party members to um, take over the booth and uh, fill the party ballot. Uh, ballot boxes with the votes of the party they all want to support. Another major theme is the portrayal of women in um, this novel, mainly the alienation of widows. It shows how um, women are portrayed in society in the late 1990s and women uh, in this uh, society are conditioned to such an extent by the society that they seem to accept all the rules and regulations that have been given to them. It, for example, in the novel, um, the women are considered a woman only when they give birth to children or when they look after their households. This shows how um, women have been set um, uh, rigid roles by society and they find very hard to break out of these roles. Also, the um, protagonist Benita Dal is a widow and it shows how widows are alienated by all those around them, whether it be their own family members or members of society. Another theme is the struggle with unemployment. We see that a lot of characters in the novel um, struggle with unemployment because of the changing job scenario, the um, uh, lesser um, uh, importance given to skilled workers and the lack of available jobs for um, older people. 
The style of writing is simple yet descriptive. There are very rich descriptions of all the culture, location and history of the place. The uh, setting of the story is in Kathmandu in Nepal and the small town Kaireni Tar is um, described very beautifully and um, all the descriptions include descriptions of the village life, the um, way of life, etc. So this book has better helped me understand the complex process of elections and understand Nepali politics. In terms of how elections are held, this book describes how it is still practiced in many villages in, uh, in the country. It explains how the power of democracy doesn't magically bring peace. People must earn it. It gives perspectives of the common politicians as well as the people who are part of um, the elections process, whether it be a party worker or a peon working for the party of, uh, office. Moreover, it gives descriptions about how the common people react to political parties and uh, how they are um, a lot of times deceived by the promises given by political parties as well as how they hope every election is renewed in political parties hoping for a better future for them for the next um, elections. There is also a, a very a, a gradual but of um, character development. All the characters are depicted having some sort of personal struggle, whether the struggle has to do with society or uh, uh, restrictions based on their uh, uh, social status or unemployment and the lot of their struggles involve accepting the changes around them. As a result, we see that all her characters in the novel are flawed, they are failing, they are trapped and yet they are full of desire and hope and ambition to move on and work out the possibilities for their own personal liberation. I think that the overall the novel is very um, well explained, well written, has a very um, descriptive manner of explaining all the uh, processes involved in elections as well as the personal struggles people face in a small town in a time of change, in a time of liberation, in a time where democracy is um, the newest and the most important thing which is necessary for a nation to survive. Thank you.